Hi, everybody. Let me tell you a story. Last winter, I was out ice fishing like I like to do. Like you might notice this happy guy right here. And we were out, a friend of mine, we were out ice fishing and a guy came out driving out on a, in a car, had a different license plate on it. And he started drilling a big hole in the ice. It was huge, cut a big hole in there. We're using a chainsaw. And he was going to start spearing fish. Now, he was able to do that. If I did that, I could have gotten a lot of trouble from the DNR. Could have lost my fishing license. This guy didn't get any trouble. He was fine. Totally legal to do that. He had Native American license plates on his car. He was from an, a Native American reservation. And he had a permit to spear fish. Let's talk about how that works. For one, uh, spearing fish, uh, you use a spear, it looks kind of like this, uh, these kinds of things. Uh, sometimes you have decoys in the water, but you cut a big hole in the ice. You use a chainsaw, cut a big hole in the ice. Here they're pushing this ice chunk underneath the ice. Um, and so it's kind of a big process. But you really can't do it in Wisconsin with only a few exceptions. One place you can do it is on Lake Winnebago. Here's Barron County, right? Remember? Barron County right over here. Is you can actually go onto Lake Winnebago and a couple of rivers that are right next to it. And you can spear for sturgeon for one very short season out of the year. Uh, these are huge fish. Uh, the DNR does put limits on it but it's a really cool thing. Uh, it's, it can be a very short season. The DNR decides how many fish you can harvest, and the season could last a day. It could last three weeks. You never know uh, until you start. These fish get really big. I actually know the lady who's in this picture. This was the biggest one a few years ago. This was about six feet long and 93 pounds. Uh, so that would be a big fourth grader. Uh, I think we're pulling that thing through the ice. But the reason why some people can in Wisconsin, even if you're not on Lake Winnebago, is if you are a member of one of these tribes. Here is a map of what Wisconsin, what tribes lived in Wisconsin before it was settled. Um, so we had lots of different tribes living here. Ojibwa tribe would have lived uh, mostly in our area. Cumberland would have been right around here. Um, and so we have these recognized tribes that have treaties with our federal government, all these little yellow areas. These are Native American reservations. These people have what's called a tribal, uh, they have tribal sovereignty because they have been recognized by the United States government as being sovereign. They have tribal sovereignty. And sovereignty, if you remember, means that they have the power to make their own rules. Sovereignty is the ability to make your own rules. And they have the ability to make their own fishing regulations, their own um, set of laws, and their own government structure, like you might have seen in the videos. So looking at our government system, which we have right here, a tribal government will often follow the federal laws, so it would fit in right in between here. They would actually be able to not follow state laws, like fishing regulations, if they don't want to. So a tribal government would go right here. In this level, tribal government would follow federal laws, but they do not have to follow state laws. They have the power to make their own rules because they have a treaty with the federal government and they're allowed to do their own thing. They often do have branches of government. Sometimes they only have two branches, depending on the tribe. Each tribe has a different tribal government. 
Some of them decide not to have an executive branch at all, and they take that out. Some actually add in another branch of government to handle certain policies. Uh, so there's different ways that they do this. Almost all of them have a legis or all of them do have a legislative branch, a group of people to make the rules. Um, some of them just use the legislative branch also to enforce them instead of having an executive branch. And they typically have a judicial branch as well. Uh, one of the tribes actually just has a legislative branch. So they have one group that makes the laws, enforces the laws, and judges everything. But different tribes have different sets of rules. They are allowed to do that because their treaty is with the United States government. So they do follow the Constitution of the United States, but not the state constitution. These tribes have their own constitution. Each tribe has their own constitution. They have the ability to make their own rules.